I apologize for being late. But are we ready to roll? We're good, Coach. Okay, good morning to everyone. Appreciate you being here. Uh, certainly excited for our guys. Um, really good road win. Proud of the guys for the way they responded after a slow start. And uh, to show resiliency and grit and tough it out. And uh, execute better in the second half, come out with a victory. But uh, quickly, just refocus on getting better and certainly on our next opponent this coming Saturday in UCLA. That being said, uh, questions, please. Let's start with James. Mario, a couple on the defensive side. One, uh, to go back to the dime package, I know we've talked about it, but that was an area last year, third and medi uh, longer and, and really long, that was a big disconnect for this defense. And so far, it's gone extremely the other direction. It's been tremendous so far. Just your impressions of, again, even with depleted personnel, managed to come through with guys who hadn't played that much in game one, delivering those results. And secondly, something we haven't really talked about the last year and a half, Mario, you guys had missed tackles on defense for the first time, I think, under Andy in a pretty large number. Um, your takeaways on watching the film on the defensive side? Well, I think two things. Number one, I'm really proud of the guys that have stepped up. You know, we have been a little bit depleted and certainly getting guys healthy. Uh, and then just getting other guys developed and playing with the dime package and some of the things that we've done with that have been really effective. And we expect that uh, that particular package to expand and keep growing. In terms of missed tackles, uh, it just as a team overall, blocking and tackling has to improve. When you, when you have that much time off, you always wonder what it's going to look like on a game day. Number one, credit to the way Washington State created space. And they've got some guys that have some really good making missability. And uh, they made some plays, but thought as the game went on, particularly in the second half, we, uh, we got our feet underneath us and did a better job with our balance and our body control. And we're able to be, uh, do a better job tackling. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Are you one of the best teams nationally last year in enforcing turnovers? Now two games in, haven't got one yet. Can you go back and maybe reflect on what's going what's going on there, and then kind of ways to improve that as something that you, you focus on in practice? Well, even more importantly, is uh, we hung on to the ball a lot better and didn't have turnovers last year. And this year, we're I think now minus five in turnover margin. So we're certainly on the wrong side of that that scale that we want to be on, and it starts with ball security. We got to do a much better job with that. Um, yeah, we did force at this point last, we had forced some more turnovers. I do believe that will come. It comes with better tackling. Um, it comes with just getting more and more repetitions and opportunities. And I think we're close on causing some and forcing some, um, but we got to stay at it. And uh, the entire week, the entire season, every single day has got to be commit uh, a complete commitment to technique and fundamentals. And when you do that and when you're disciplined, you know, when you play within the scheme and you do what you're supposed to do, those things come your way. The things bounce, the ball bounces your way. So we got to continue harping on discipline. We got to continue harping on technique and fundamentals and playing with relentless effort. Julian Minnesota and KZI. Mario, your thoughts on uh, UCLA, particularly the way they've been scoring the ball the last two weeks and the challenges that that offensive side, especially Dorian Thompson Robinson, present to you guys this upcoming weekend? Well, you know, it starts with him. I mean, probably, if not the most dynamic, one of the most dynamic players in college football. Uh, he's complemented by a lot of speed and explosiveness. Um, I think a part of their offense that doesn't get enough credit is their offensive line. I think they're extremely physical. They do a great job on their double teams. Um, they do a great job finishing blocks, keeping him clean, and uh, just doing a great job getting pushed at the line of scrimmage. Um, they've done a great job with their tight ends, both of them. They use two of them, and uh, certainly one's got a little bit more attention than the other in the passing game, but they do a great job using those guys and misplaced personnel. Um, they're very explosive at the tailback position. Um, former track athlete and one of them, um, they get them out in space, mismatches on linebackers, involve them in the passing game. Extremely explosive guys, guys that can make you miss and take it to the house. Um, a wide receiver, they've, you know, obviously we're familiar with a couple of these guys. And, of course, Chase Cota, um, great player. You know, Jalen Irwin as well. Um, just a very – Kyle Phillips is, I think, how many receptions do you have already? Um, he's got six, seven, eight receptions. But overall, they spread the ball around really well. They challenge you with their formations or unbalanced sets. Uh, the quarterback runs. His decision making is excellent. You can do it with his arm. It's strong. He's accurate. He's very well coached. Uh, just overall, you know, about as good as an offense as, as we have faced. Kevin Wade, 247 Sports. 
Hey, Coach, just curious about the availability of some players, uh, Popo and the tight ends, and then the group, including Micah and the others that weren't available this past week. Yeah, I believe that um, that Campmore and McCormick and Popo will be available. Um, I do not think that Pittman, Stevens, David Davis, and Spencer Webb, Spencer Webb's still a question mark, but the other three will not be available. Uh, I don't think they'll be available. Um, I guess that sums it up right there. And of course, Nick Pickett has to sit the first half due to a, a targeting call. AJ Jacobson, rivals. Coach, it seemed to me that you mostly went with a six-man rotation there on the offensive line uh, against Washington State. Um, you're, you mentioned earlier you're hoping to you know bump that number up to six or you know or seven or eight. How close are you to getting more guys in that rotation? Uh, I feel like we're close. I do. I also feel that Coach Mirabal and um, has got those guys playing at a really high level. That that group of guys is really they're gelling and they're figuring things out. You know they. Um, they understand what we're trying to do. And therefore, even when they mix and match and play beside each other, they're just, they're doing a really good job communicating, um, being able to pass off stunts and whatnot. And certainly they're gonna have to this week because this team certainly moves a lot. Um, very similar to what Washington State used to be. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we hope we can get there. I think we can, I think we're really, really close. I'd hate to, you know, come, you know, get out there and say it again and it not happen, but it's really close. You know, a lot of guys have been playing and practicing really well. So we're, we're going to try to get there. Matt Preem, 247 Sports. Yeah, Mario, Travis Dye has 220 yards and three touchdowns on just 13 touches. That's a pretty remarkable, I guess, yards per touch for him. What's just been, what's made him so effective in this offense, and I guess, is there even more to capitalize with him? I think so. I think we're kind of just scratching, um, you know, the surface on Coach Moorhead's plan of attack. Um, I think there's full buy-in by those guys on offense and also trying to use the strengths of guys to um, how it fits the playbook. And certainly, Travis, you saw obviously with the catch last week, everybody's talking about a couple catches, um, really good out of the backfield, uh, explosive guy. He's got great balance and body control also. He's got great vision, and he's a great blocker as well. So I think that often gets lost in some of his playmaking ability. The guy's a really good blocker. He's really smart, and he's, um, he's, he's, he's all about the juice now. You know, we mentioned, you know, in our locker room how we felt that him and Jalen Red were misrepresented in their stature in the media guide because of how big they play. They're bigger than what they're listed at. You know, they play bigger. They they bring a lot more to the table than just what the, their abilities, you know, show on tape and, and what their stature says in the media guide. So um, really fired up about the way Travis is not only playing, but the way he's approaching the game, the way he's positively affecting his teammates. Ryan Thorburn, register guard. Mario, obviously you guys have to be ready for everything this year, but how difficult would it be to prepare for an opponent that wasn't on your schedule within 48 hours and just, I guess, how impressed are you with UCLA's bounce back this week uh, after a tough start at Colorado? They looked really impressive um, and impressive that that was done in, within a 48 hour time frame because they threw a lot. They threw a lot at Cal and uh, most of it worked. Um, really impressed with their physicality. Uh, I thought their defense with all the, the stemming the movement, the stunts that they're doing, the pressures, you know, again, um, a huge, a huge um, element of what Washington State used to be under, under Grinch is what you see on tape. And um, the interior of their defensive line really took over that game, causing a lot of negative plays, beating back blocks, anticipating pullers, getting in the backfield, causing all kinds of penetration, and then running their stunts to perfection and causing all kinds of issues for the quarterback. So, just really impressed with their physicality and their linebackers. They get downhill in a hurry. They don't, uh, you know, they don't, you can't wait around. Those guys aren't going to sit back and let plays come to them. They're going to attack the football. They're going to attack the ball carriers, close on the quarterback. So very impressed. Jerry Thompson, Ducks Illustrated. Yeah, coach on the targeting, uh, how difficult is it for, to teach that, for to be aggressive yet not do that? And is there a key thing that, a player has to be mindful to prevent that because I, I'm sure they were, none of them were intentional, but it still happens quite often. Yeah, I, I think it's very difficult. And that's, that's a great question, a great point. I think it's, uh, you know, when it's not intentional, 
I think that it, this should be looked at even we, – we need to take a deeper dive into it. These guys haven't played football for 300-plus days, but we expect them to be perfect when – Things are high. It's easy to watch it in slow mo. Oh wow, he could have avoided that. Well, maybe one guy's five nine and the other guy's six two, and he's trying to close in on a play. And within a split second, a jump goes down to ground level, and all of a sudden, you know, faces and helmets collide without any intent to cause any any malicious uh, harm. So, I uh, you know, we teach it, we, we preach it, we try to rep it as best that we can. The speed of the game sometimes is uh, is is much. To overcome and and things like this happen. So I wish there was a, I wish for non malicious intent situations. I wish there was some type of relief or reprieve or at least an analysis and assessment because um, you know in a year where you already have attrition um, and whatnot. I just uh, you know it is what it is. So press on. Warren Williamson, uh, Oregon Duck Football News. Mario, minus the turnovers, there was a jump. It seemed uh, improvement from game one to game two. What's your impression about that? And are you seeing that improvement at the speed you'd like in practice as well? Yeah, we've been practicing well. You know, we practice good on good. We go fast, so we're getting tested by our defense, which is an excellent defense. And uh, the jump, it took place after a slow start. It's, we shouldn't need that to get us going. You know, we don't, we shouldn't have to respond to ourselves. We could, you know, we can respond to what teams throw at us and adverse and everything else, but we can't cause our own adversity. And certainly, um, you know, we were able to, to survive with this past time and get on track and really make some, you know, put together some really good, strong drives, some really good um, third down conversions to keep drives alive as well, and a couple fourth down conversions. So, um, but we're starting to, to make more explosive plays. Uh, we're starting to, really understand offensively what we're trying to do. So uh, all in all, really good progress, but there's a lot of stuff to correct, a lot of things to get better at. James Crepia, the Oregonian. Mario, a couple other on personnel and uh, one on the run game. Uh, Justin Flo didn't travel, and uh, Pat Herbert, you'd said last week, was a possibility to return those two. And on the run game, your guys' splits from first to second half are unbelievable. Um, I mean, CJ specifically, but the whole team, is that – mainly line adjustments that are happening at halftime or is that just wearing guys down because it's, it's like four and a half to over nine I think yards per carry is a different well well the first thing is is Herbert um he's not available yet but we expect him back in a little bit and Flo did travel he just wasn't available to play um first half to second half you know you want to be able to run the ball well all the time but I think sticking to the run um and being balanced on offense a lot of people try to say that we're run first we're balanced you know, we're almost 50-50 if you count, if you factor in RPOs called. What ends up being run, what ends up being spit out there, you know, you can't control. Defense dictates that. But, um, again, just proud of the way that in a year where you haven't had a, a full year of strength and conditioning, that our strength and conditioning is, uh, I guess, the residue from early in the summer is showing up. And um, our guys are, are playing a little bit stronger as the game goes on. And we're making some good adjustments and finishing blocks and, but we've also made a, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of mistakes and some errors that where things should be a lot better, and we need to get better, you know. And certainly, it's a technique and a fundamental thing, and that's been the focus of our entire organization since we started camp and everything else, and that'll continue throughout the rest of the season. Eric Scopel. James just mentioned the run splits from half to half. Is is part of that? Do you think? I guess, you know, you're resting and you're rotating guys. I know Sala and I think Alex are the only players who played every snap the last couple of games. Do you think there's a cumulative effect of just these players are rested throughout the course of the game? I don't know. You know, you always think that that should have some type of an impact on it. I think more than being rested, guys are hungry to say, hey, you know, I, I want all the reps. And I think that has a lot to do with it. I think that there's nothing more motivating than competition in playing football, right? And to know that there's there's another guy there that can snatch a couple of your reps away, I don't think any of those guys want to give up their reps, and that's a good thing. So the quicker we can get to seven guys playing and then eight guys playing, the better for everybody. Matt Preem. All right, it feels like this year's team is considerably faster, just overall team speed than maybe the previous couple seasons. Do you notice that? And I guess how big of an impact has that been uh, for you guys in these two wins? Well, you know, again, I don't know if, if we're if we're faster. Um, 
you know, might be playing faster. You know, I think if you took numbers from the previous couple of years, I think it'd probably be the same. But I think, you know, we're, we're doing a better job with personnel use. You know, we're getting guys in positions to make more plays and and uh, take advantage of situations. And, you know, also guys are maturing. You know, we're, obviously, we, you know, I, I know they, the whole roster percentage, we're, we're the youngest team um, around, but we also have some older guys that have been here that have played a lot of football. Um, and they're getting, not only are they playing well, they're getting younger guys to play better. And I thought on the road, and I get it, there's no, there, there is no crowd now, right? With fans not being allowed in the stadium, but I thought that the combination of that leadership and those guys just playing faster and getting those guys, those young guys to have confidence in themselves leads to a, a faster, more physical football team. So um, we're, we're getting, we're getting better, but still have miles to go. Time for two more, uh, Ryan Thorburn. Mario, uh, Tyler's been around, but he has not played a lot yet. And uh, are you at all surprised with just how quickly he's picked up and executed Joe's scheme, uh, given the lack of an off season? No, sir, because uh, Tyler grinds at it and he knows that uh, he, he wants to get better and he's going to continue to get better and he's hungry and driven. So uh, and he's always been that way. So I'm not surprised that he is picking things up and progressing at a really good rate. And, uh, and I'm also not surprised because Coach Moorhead is a, a really, really uh, excellent football coach and teacher. And his, his teaching progression lends to guys learning systems really well, thoroughly, inside and out, understanding the what, the how, and the why of everything we do. And uh, when you do that, when you can grasp all three of those things in an offense, you know how all the pieces are coming together as opposed to just kind of looking at the whole thing through a straw and you've got command of the offense. And, uh, and I think that's what Tyler is quickly approaching to. Last question, James. Mario, you talked about how uh, prior to the season, uh, analysts and everybody were looking ahead to, to everyone on the schedule for all these potential adjustments. You mentioned what UCLA just did, but because of that and what's going on across the country, do you guys prepare for not just what's remaining, but, literally everyone out there in the league who you haven't played because something could happen on a Wednesday or Thursday and all of a sudden you're playing someone who wasn't previously scheduled. And to that point, is this conversation is going on nationally about possibly delaying the playoff or pushing back conference title games. Do you think there's integrity of record for division champions if you don't play everyone in the division? Because right now teams in the South may not play everyone in the South. I think everything has to be on the table, right? Since uh, I guess – no one wrote a handbook for this thing, right? So I think as time goes on and scenarios pop up, everybody's got to put their heads together and try to figure out what the best scenario is for the players, right? For the sake of the season, the guys that have actually, you know, opted in and gone all in and um, have played. And from there, you know, you got to figure it out. In terms of having an alternate plan, you really can't plan for two people at the same time. You have to have your other, your alternate plan on deck. You know, if you start getting a feel for, well, so-and-so may not play, you know, cause that kind of leaks out there, right? You see, all right, so-and-so might be in trouble or the team that you're gonna play against may have some issues popping up. Then you, you get that, you know, you, you take that plan off the shelf and you get it ready to roll and be ready for a phone call or whatever comes and say, all right, boom, sudden change. Now we're focusing on blank and you go on to the next one. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's everyone's on a high alert 24 seven, you know, DEFCON five, that's an eighties term from an old eighties movie, but yeah, we're on high alert. Thank you coach. Appreciate your time. Okay guys. Thank you very much. Have a great one. Be safe.